In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, two concepts that are related to section 4.2 in your book, marginal distributions and conditional distributions. I'm going to be using the same data set as what you're going to see in the example that starts on page 292. So if you want to pause the video and get page 292 where you can see it, that would be great. Uh, we're just going to walk through some different types of distributions and what you can do with them. Uh, if you uh, take a look now that, that hopefully you're on page 292, uh, there's a, an example there about college students. And what it's trying to do is talk about the demographic breakdown of college students by two different variables, hence the name two-way table. And as you can see on that page, there's uh, students that are grouped by age and grouped by gender, male and female, and then they're also expressed as totals. So take a moment just to look over the data and make observations about um, where most of the students seem to be grouped. All right, as you can see on the table here, uh, most of the students are definitely grouped in the age group from 18 to 24 years. We shouldn't be terribly surprised at that, considering that's a common age for college students to be. There are a sizable number, however, that are in the 25 to 34 year category and also a pretty sizable number, 35 and older. It may be surprising to see group, students grouped in the 15 to 17 year category, but there are a handful of those students. Our brain tends to look at numbers like this and when it's trying to draw comparisons or make distinctions. The difficulty is in assessing these numbers in their current form. It's just very difficult for us to compare, say, 10,365 over here to 3,494 to 2,630. We have some idea how those numbers relate to each other, but they're easier when they're expressed in terms of percents, and so that's really what we're going to be working with first. What we want to do here is look at what we call a marginal distribution, and the key thing that you want here is you want to focus in on the margins, namely the stuff that's on the edges, the totals. And as you can see, the totals have been provided for us. If you're working with a table that doesn't have this totals column, keep in mind that you may actually have to uh, provide those. You may have to calculate your totals either uh, across rows, like which is what is indicated in this last column, or across the columns themselves. And you can see those totals are shown at the bottom. So to get the number in the corner, which is the grand total for the whole table, the 16,639, I can either add the 9,321 to 7,317, or I can add all of the numbers above the 16,639, and I'll get the total in the corner. It's a good idea just to keep in mind where all of these numbers are going and what they all can be used for. All right, so again, since we know that percents are, are definitely more informative, what percents would be useful and what would we want to know? Well, for example, it might be very useful for us to know each of these totals on the right-hand side over here, except we want them expressed as percents. So for example, if I'd like to know what percent of all college students are in the age group from 18 to 24 years, well, I would need to make a comparison. I would need to take the total for the 18 to 24-year-olds and then divide it by the total of all college students. So essentially I'd be taking 10,365 and I'd be dividing that by 16,639. That number is going to give me a decimal 0.623 which is going to be expressed as a percent as 62.3 percent. That number is a lot friendlier to my brain than to express 10,000 and change compared to 16,000 and change. I just don't have a good way to compare those numbers in my head and, and really get a sense of what they mean. But 62%, well, that tells me that it's more than half, but not quite three quarters, that it's somewhere in between, maybe somewhere right in the neighborhood of two thirds. That allows me to get a much better comparison. You should pause the video and take the remaining four numbers, 150, 3,494, and uh, 2630 and change those into percents as well. All right, you'll notice my calculations down here below the table. I've just taken the different values and I've converted them into percents. 
Notice that each one of them is expressed currently as a decimal. If I move the decimal over a couple of places, then I'm going to have everything expressed as a percent. You can see these percents on page 293. They're put into a small table for you that just kind of shows you what a marginal distribution would look like. So whenever you hear the term marginal distribution, what are you looking for? Well, you're looking to take the totals in rows and or columns and convert those totals into percents. Now keep in mind, we could also do this for males and females. As you can see, the number of females is larger than the number of males in this particular group. And so, for example, if I want to know more than just the fact that females are more than half of the distribution, I could certainly change that number into a percent. Pause the video for a minute and change females and males into percents of the total for the population. So here are calculations showing you what it looks like when you do a marginal distribution for females and a marginal distribution for males. You can see that you get 56% females, which is not surprising considering the numbers that we have, and a 44% uh, for males. And when you add those together, also please notice you get 100%, which makes sense. All right, next we're going to be talking about different relationships that could go on inside the tables especially as we begin to examine um, where we're going to go from here. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to concentrate on um, a particular row of the table. Let's say that we wanted to focus on the row representing the most common age for college students, 18 to 24-year-olds. And we want to know, is this same distribution of females to males, does that hold up inside that age group? Is it the same? Well, in that case, we still be establishing a percent, but it would be a slightly different one. Let's take a look at that. For example, if we're looking at females. In this case, if I want to know what percent of females, or what percent of the age group 18 to 24 years is female, I actually need a different ratio. I have to take the number of females, but I can't divide it by this number down in the corner. Think about why. If I do that, I'm including folks that are of all different age groups, when really what I want to know about is this row of the table right here. So instead of changing this by dividing 5668 by the corner number, I'm actually going to divide it by the total of people in that group. If I do that particular calculation, I'm going to get a number that's somewhat similar to what I had before but it is going to be slightly different. In fact, in this case, it's going to be 0.546, or roughly 55%. So that means that within that age group, there's just a slightly smaller percentage of the population that's female as opposed to the population that's male. If I change my mind, and I'd like to look at a different age group, just to see what happens to the percent of females as the age changes, Let's say, for example, that I'm talking about people 35 years or older. So I'm looking at this row instead. So now I'm doing females again, but this time they're 35 or older. Whereas in this case, they were 18 to 24. Well, let's see what we get. In this case, we have 1,660 females out of 2,630. That's going to be a very different proportion, in fact, it's going to be all the way up to 63%. Now this important observation gives us some information, which is that as college students get older, a higher percentage of them are female. Now there could be a lot of reasons for this, but it's certainly an observation that could give us more information than what we had simply looking at numbers in a table. As we start to look at comparing women, the percent of women who are in two age groups, we're really looking at conditional distributions. Why? Because we're setting a condition. We're saying we want to look at the percent of the population that's female, but they also have to be in a particular age group. Now, by contrast, we can kind of go the other way as well. Let's say that I want to look at the percent uh, within columns this time instead of within a row. Well, if I restrict myself to, say, the male column, then I'm definitely going to be restricting myself to only talking about male students, but they could be in various age groups. 
So for example, if I want to see what percentage of males um, are in each of these age groups, I could do that. So if I want to say what percentage of all college students that are males are 25 to 34 years old, I'd be concentrating on this number. I'd want to also compare it to the number of males going to college in general. So if I take the proportion 50, 1589, or I should say the ratio, divided by 7317, let's think about for a minute what that's going to represent, and we'll also express it as a percent. So if I change it, I get 0.217, or roughly 0.22, or 22%. So what does this number mean? Well, it says this. If I want to represent all male college students for a moment and talk about them, we would say that 22% of them fall in the age range of 25 to 34 years old. So 22% of all male, male college students, not just college students in general, but male college students are 25 to 34 years old. Again, that number in and of itself isn't all that useful, but when I begin to look at trends or how things change in a table, that's when I really get to know something. So a marginal distribution, just as kind of a review, focuses on the numbers out here in the totals column or the totals row. If you don't have a totals column or a totals row, you might have to actually create one so you have numbers to work with. A conditional distribution says, let's pick, by contrast, a particular row or a particular column, and let's just do arithmetic based on that row or that column. So we're setting a condition, like in this case, that a student has to be in an age group from 18 to 24 years, or it could be in another case, maybe I talk about that they have to be female, and I want to know something about what age group they fall into. And so with the conditional distributions, I'm always starting with a particular row or a particular column that I'm going to focus on, but I'm always working with percents.